Let's give it up to the Armando! Yeah. Hello! Hi. Hello! Hi, everyone. <laughs> Yay! Welcome, everyone, to the Armando portion of Die Laughing. We are so delighted and grateful that we get to perform together again after a 2019 run. Thank you for the intro, Becky. I am going all the way back. Just so, so young. In February, I seen you in so long. Friday nights. Yep. Um, so together, we're going to perform an Armando, which is, if you're not already familiar, it's a form that involves personal stories from your Armando. Today, I am the Armando for at least half of this set. We'll see how many stories I can come up with. And um, afterwards, we're going to have just, yeah, anybody come up. So um, we're going to base some scenes off of personal stories. So I'm going to ask you if you could please provide me with uh, an idea. What's, what's something that anybody has a story about? Just taxes. I heard taxes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Time of year. Dating. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Let's see. So I'm going to go with taxes since that was the first brave thing somebody said. And um, taxes make me think of, uh, of financial stability or the lack thereof, uh, getting real with one's finances. Um, taxes also make me think of um, back in 2005, I, uh, I was lucky enough to get a job working in, uh, in central, kind of like south central France, in this little town called Le Puy-en-Velay. My job title was assistant of language, uh, assistante d'anglais um, was, my, was my full title there. And so um, I had to provide a ton of paperwork, right? There's a huge bureaucracy in France if you're not already familiar with this. So not only did I have to supply so much in order to be eligible for this job, which was, um, it was from the French government, uh, that was my employer, specifically their education department. Um, I had to, during my time there, get tested for all kinds of diseases. So I had to go to a doctor's office like mid-appointment, like mid, um, I was there for nine months, so it was like four months in, to demonstrate that I did not have tuberculosis and that I didn't bring anything uh, <laughs> untoward with me and that I wasn't going to infect anybody in France. And I remember I had to get like this x-ray of my midsection. Um, so I had to get an x-ray and it showed off like my lungs because they're really scared of TB. <laughs> um, so I had to like demonstrate that my lungs were, were safe for, for France. And um, I just remember kind of like thinking like, dang, that's the first time I've ever had an x-ray like of any part of my body and I kind of like hung it up proudly in the little the little room where I was staying. <laughs> I was like that's kind of cool and uh, it, weirdly I had like an outline of my boobs and stuff but I was like I had a few visitors I uh, didn't really have any friends there um, but when I did have a friend over they commented and I was like yeah I am TB free you, you're safe with me so <laughs> there you go that's my that's my story and <laughs> Huh. Strange, right? No, it's just a picture of my insides. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of wondering why it was... In the spice rack? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a weird place to put it. I think it's fine. It's my house. It's our house. But... <laughs> our house. Yeah. The... Your insides. I just want to know why this photo was in my birthday card. <laughs> if you look really closely, my intestines spell out almost happy birth. Yeah. <laughs> and just, hey, Doug, um, I was just, most people keep flowers. Um, this is your pickled appendix? Yes. <laughs> um, I uh, literally made that for you. I'm the only person in the world who could do it. It is absolutely the greatest science show of affection. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the thesis in your paper is clear, but as far as the, if you could be anybody for a day, I, you just put a picture of your heart valve. <laughs> John. I, John. I put my heart into that paper quite literally. Oh my god. Sorry, 
if I was going to be a ring, it's just toenail clippings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Catherine, I'm getting real with 2005. I'm putting up the Jonas Brothers poster, and I don't even care, okay? You know what? You go ahead and let anyone in, in my room. I am proud to hang this on my wall. <laughs> that poster always looks like it's staring right at me. It doesn't matter where I go. It's just, uh, it's just the Jonas Brothers, you know? It's just Kevin and Joe, you know? They're not, they're not, what? It makes me feel uncomfortable. I took it down because I couldn't sleep. Oh, they're it's... staring at me. They are just watching me. Catherine, it's not like they're alive. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, and they move when you're not looking. Well, like maybe just to you. Look, there's a lot of energy with these, you know, rock and roll stars. Okay, are you all right? I mean, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, I'll take it down. Welcome. So I hear you see the Jonases as well. <laughs> they mouth things at me from the pictures, telling me how important I am to them. Just mouth things. I haven't heard them except in my dreams. Tell me, have they come from the poster? It seems out like of the poster. They are reaching out, and then my roommate comes home, and they just suck back in. <laughs> You're still in the early stages. <laughs> Is there hope? We have to work quickly. There's a cure? I want you to know that I lost everything to the Jonases. No. <laughs> no, how did they take it? How did they take it from you? First, they come out of the poster. Yeah? First, it seems fun with their rock band instruments. Do they teach you to play? No. They pull out matches and start burning everything you own. Professor! The Jonases have attacked the city! No, I can't get out of here! We have to move quickly. Come with us. The Jonases are violent, but we're hoping that maybe you can be the cure. I'm in. Um, ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to get off the flight. I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I don't understand what's wrong. I bought a ticket. I so understand. I um, it just turns out that your lungs are not safe for the plane. <laughs> Your lungs are unsafe. Um, they're unsafe for the plane. So when I went through security, I, I put my hands up like this, and it goes like this. Uh -huh, and then uh -huh. my they cleared you initially, but then you know we took a relook at it, and you're, it's just that they're just they're your lungs could bring this plane down. <laughs> Uh, that's really, I need a to just not breathe that uh, big. This is the captain speaking. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my instruments. Did someone get on this plane that was not supposed to? <laughs> that's <laughs> you. That's I can't. You. So you're making me like really anxious. If you could just stop taking deep breaths. <laughs> I <am> this, is, <laughs> this is. You can't do this. Excuse I me. I was just working on the plane and the wing just fell off. I know. <laughs> we're working on it. Yes. Uh, can I help you? Uh, hey, Captain, this is your intern, Bobby. Really excited for my first flight with you today. Um, I can't wait to get back home safe and sound. <laughs> I'd, I'd like a seat change. I uh, need to... You should get off just while you can. Run. Is just... that an option? <laughs> yep, just Will run. Will reopen the... Yep. Okay. Yeah, just go. Hey, okay, Captain, go. is it normal to feel just sick before the, the plane takes off? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have, I have mega bus tickets. I have Amtrak vouchers. Attention, passengers on the plane. Unfortunately, my intern has just exploded from some kind of thing that was caught on board. Yes. yes. So I'm going to have to ask you oh, all God. to just take deep breaths as we shall explode as well. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you? You come to this aisle at Target. And you just start sighing? <laughs> I am the assistant aisle four manager. And I want you to have the best customer experience you can. Look at this pork and beans on sale. <laughs> you think I've never been inside a convenience store before? <laughs> they used to call me the Kush in the Dunde. It means he who is comfortable with paws. Yeah, I know what it means. <laughs> I'm not here to find anything, sir. Not anything except for a baguette. <laughs> That's aisle six. Excuse but... me, do you work here? 
Not only do I work here, I am the assistant aisle four manager. That's great, but like, all of a sudden, just everything in this aisle seems really disappointing. Pork and beans. 79 cents. I was really excited. <laughs> I was really excited to buy it, but then I just kind of felt like everything got worse. Excuse me, sir. How much for this poster of the young, uh, beautiful boys with their instruments? <laughs> <laughs> aisle four manager reminds me of the first eight years after I came back from my dreamlike and exquisite time in France. I came back and I came back to Minnesota, specifically Minneapolis, and I started working in hospitality because as a French major, yeah, <laughs> that's what you do. You do stuff like that, right? Um, I loved working in hospitality because I'm an extrovert. I love hearing people's stories. And um, specifically, I really enjoy when uh, somebody is willing to like talk with you and chit chat and everything. And uh, along the way, um, in my hospitality career as an assistant front office manager, I had the great pleasure of meeting the one and only Art Garfunkel, um, who stayed at the hotel I was working at and came up to me um, when I was working at the front desk, and I was just starstruck, and he knew it. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. He came up to me and started checking in like a normal human being would, and I was so delighted, and I was like, cool, he's being super cool, I'm going to be super cool about this. I'm not going to say, like, I love your work, and I loved, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to do this. So I was very polite, and... Um, I was just engaging him in conversation like any other guest because that was like my jam. I would do that. I enjoyed doing that. However, he stopped me mid-sentence and he said, he saw my name tag, he said, that is all well and good, Jennifer, but I want tea and I want it to my room immediately. And I remember thinking, God, no, never meet your heroes, I guess. So, yeah, he wasn't very nice to me or any of the other staff. But that's okay. That's my story. <laughs> oh my god. No. Sandra Phillip from the toothpaste commercials? In my store. I... Yeah. Yeah, it's my first time in your store. I expected a little bit more to do, I guess. How but... silly of me to think that Sandra would be okay with this? Oh! We have to redo the whole thing. Go! So, oh my God, is that Sandra Phillips? It is. In our store. You know, I only buy Colgate. I can't buy anything else. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> She's everything I do. She's so invisible. <laughs> uh, we'll just need you to grab a seat and then just like put the, um, just pin this on here and do a quick cleaning. And Oh my god. I I know you from the commercial. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's we don't use Colgate. We're like a crest office, but um, I think that's like okay. I, I it um, was a job. I really don't care. I it's just like you're like the face of Colgate. And like your teeth are not as good in the, as in the commercial, but like <laughs> so good. They're like so amazing. Deborah! You probably don't recognize me. Um, <laughs> oh my god, it is so nice to just just be in the same room as another burnout. I mean, oh my god. Oh, holy shit. Uh, excuse me, I would um I'd like to check in like a normal human guest. <laughs> if I could just do that, please. <laughs> I have our stuff, like we are normal human guests. We are normal. <laughs> human guests. 
me and my friend? Jeremy, be normal. Confidant? I know an alien when I see one. <laughs> I am the leader of not one, not two, but three conspiracy theorist online forums. <laughs> what do you mean? This is my sister? Friend? Please, please excuse us for a minute. Sister friend. Jeremy, we have talked about this I before. Know. You cannot I accuse know. guests of being non-human. But I'm not accusing, I know. You, are, you have two strikes. You have two strikes, and I am firing you from night on it if you do not pull it together. Just tuck them in. They are normal people. Mm. <laughs> Our faces are friendlier now. <laughs> May we check in? Like normal human guests. Yes. Would you like floor seven or floor three? We would like your top floor because we enjoy the top. <laughs> Humans, right? Now, if I were to say that the rooms are lined with salt. That seems like normal, normal. human expectations. Uh, if I love salt, I will rub fries on my walls. I would tell you that the TVs come equipped with a UHF signal. Would that excite you? Ah! 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 Yes. Does this normal amenity sink you? I'm listing our amenities. Talk the salt walls, the UHF signal. Talk about the fitness center. <laughs> the fitness center is over one with Glorbos. <laughs> that will be perfect for our pet, because normal humans have pets. This is our otter. <laughs> do we still have that pet policy? Yes. And I do have normal. <laughs> okay, the otter talks! <laughs> hey, uh... Thanks for um, letting me tutor you. You're like, you're so cool, but like, you you know, like you know that, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you know that. But like, um, I mean, you're really bad at calculus, but like, yeah, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh, okay. But I'm um, like a bitchin' seventeen year old. <laughs> so yeah, uh, whatever. Whoa, you just like. Push your books off the desk. That's like so cool. But like, yeah. I mean, you knew that. Yeah. You know, like, you yeah. Know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Do you go to college? No, I'm in class with you. I sit behind you and um, count one. Oh. You oh. Did, you, you didn't know that. You like go to school with me? Your face is so unfamiliar. Uh, oh. Um. I'm. Very self-conscious right now. Uh, Felicia, is he here? Uh, oh, he's as handsome the... as you say he is. Mom, what, what? If you don't put a move on him, then what's even the Mom, point? Stop no, it. I want the door open. Wow. Mm. Hey, stop. that's a bitch in seventeen. That's a bitch in seventeen. Year old. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same thing. Mom. My name's Frank. Jim. But you can call me Francis because that's my full name. I'm gonna call him Bitch and Francis. <laughs> bitch and Francis. That's good. That's good. Be cool. All right, be well, cool, honey. We'll leave the door cracked. You do whatever you two need you to do. Do whatever you need. <laughs> Your parents seem cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow, it's so cool. Oh, I really. You, you should put your feet on the desk. It was, really <laughs> it was like the coolest. Sorry to interrupt again. I just thought maybe Bitch and Francis would like some cigarettes. <laughs> uh, I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, I sure you want some cigarettes? No, I will not have you calling my son Bitching Francis. I mean, he's a bitch and seventeen-year-old. What you don't understand about Francis is that he's a remarkably intelligent boy. He smoked three cigarettes at once. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> How would you feel if you had a child who was capable? Honey, we're gonna have to come to terms with it. I can't. Our child is popular. He's not like us. He can eat 
either be bitchin' or he can be intelligent, and he cannot be both. I think he is. Tell me, has your child heard of the Jonas Brothers? <laughs> we don't have a lot of time. Well, she heard of the hey, Jonas Brothers. Hey. <laughs> Uh, I'm painfully familiar with the role of the person whose face is unfamiliar. And <laughs> I'm thinking about high school when I, I, I don't know really anybody from high school. I had like three friends in high school, truly. Like I had acquaintances, I had people who I knew. It was like folks from like um, science club that I knew that I, I really admired because I thought the science club kids were awesome. And the band, like legit, I was in love with all the people in band. Like that's my level, right? I was very, very excited by those crowds, but I was never in those crowds. So, um, so I have, uh, 20 years ago now, I graduated from high school. We have a 20 year reunion coming up. And legitimately, like on this Facebook uh, page, for the 20th high school reunion for Oak Hills High School in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I'm from, I recognize literally like three names, three people that I hung out with. Uh, what will you do for fun on a Friday? Let me, let me just walk you through a real quick, you know, rundown of a typical Friday. So my friend, my best friend Allison, lived fairly close to me. She had a video camera. Um, best friend Katie and uh, our other friend Ryan who we were the foursome that I'm describing, um, we, would, we would just like watch Monty Python's Flying Circus and then we would reenact sketches from Flying Circus and have them filmed from our video camera because we were awesome. And um, yeah, we, we did the argument sketch and we, you know, of course, like we were obsessed with um, all, of the, all of the players there. I think we all had crushes on them. Uh, but yeah, definitely informed by Monty, Monty Python, the Holy Grail was another favorite, Star Wars, Star Trek. We just, yeah, we, we, really, uh, we really got into film that way. Um, no regrets that I never got any dates and um, that nobody would know who I am from that era of my life. So, yay! Ah, best friend Martha. <laughs> Tell me, are the plans prepared? Of course they are. Good. They're right here. No, no, this won't do. A Queen's Richard can't come along. <laughs> but he is the head of the department. He has to give the presentation. He's been demoted to acquaintance. <laughs> this is a friend's retreat. <laughs> Best friend Martha. Hey, I'm learn. super excited. I'm like I have my backpack packed and everything, I'm, like ready to present. Why I'm don't ready you to tell get, like, us some quality Martha. time? I do not want to tell him. Richard. Yeah. You know this is a friends retreat, right? Yeah. Do you think we are? You think we are friends? Yeah, we're friends. I asked. Um, <laughs> you mean you've been demoted below acquaintance? They just don't acknowledge your existence? I guess so. I've even had snacks. I even held the cupcakes. Why do you still work there? I get the paychecks and they just go in the bank and it's so easy. I don't, you know. It's okay Aww. if nobody talks to me. Hey, friend Carl, how you doing? How's it going? Hey, friend John. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you really not see Curtis just standing right in front of you? Who the, who's Curtis? <laughs> Curtis! <laughs> no title Curtis! <laughs> friend John, this is no title Curtis! I, I'm very worried about you, friend. I put the clip art in my emails. <laughs> I, you know me. Hey, everyone. Um... Welcome to this meeting of People Anonymous. We don't have a problem, except for the fact that other people have a problem with us. So we're all just going to sit down and talk about how other people are our problem. It's nice to see both of you. <laughs> both of you could make it to the meeting. This meeting is all about recognizing these people. Yeah, you and you and me. And but no, no title Curtis! 
I'm right here. I, I'm, I'm talking out, I'm I sorry, think. I, I. Curtis has been dead for 30 years. <laughs> you can't mean that. Curtis isn't I there. just ate Curtis's cookies. <laughs> Doctor, we have another victim of the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> His name is Curtis. Oh, no. He doesn't even have a title. No. The this... Jonases did this. Doctor. Don't tell her. It's the Jonases, isn't it? It is. I've come to terms with this. Hello, Jonas. <laughs> All right, so I just got this camera, and I wanted to shoot a video, you know, me sitting next to my cool poster, okay? All right. I, I just got a bad feeling about this. I, I want you to know, like... I'm sorry. Is that everything you wanted it to do? Oh, my God. I just... Opening day, the twins. <laughs> I I've always wanted to be in a crowd, you know, like no. I just like look at all these people, like we're gonna get lost in sea, just like bodies. That's well, I don't want to keep holding on for that reason, but it's so exciting off of our porch. It's so oh. great. All these people. you two, you two would be perfect. I've got a bunch of blendable faces. I want to put you between. You're gonna stand out perfectly. Is she part of the crowd? I don't know. Is this you a normal say yes crowd? To this? I want to say I, yes to this. I work okay. for the Kiss Cam, so we need to put some recognizable faces in the middle of a bunch of like gray blended ones. You, uh, you don't want to blend us? us? You don't want to blend? I don't want to blend you. I don't want to blend you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Everyone okay. is yeah. going to okay. see you. You will never blend in again. Oh. Wait, this, can we have a minute? It's just gonna a minute. be great. Just a, yeah. just a let's yeah. just, I I'm don't like start. it anymore. Honey, I've always, <laughs> I've always just wanted to be a face of the crowd, you know? Yeah. Like, like, I just step into this and I'm lost in a sea. Yeah, I want to experience the feeling of nothingness, you know? <laughs> like being surrounded by beings that don't know anything about me as an individual. I like, I like that dream. I'm sorry to butt in. Do you not see what's happening here? There is six feet around you on all sides of people staring already. You are perfect. How long is it? You are perfect. Carly, how long has it been like this? You are perfect. I don't, you are perfect. I don't like baseball. No. I don't like, I don't like crowds. No. I don't put that away. No. Get out of here. It's terrible. Um, I just have to, right? Um, so speaking of sticking out in a crowd, I want to share with you the first day of my seventh grade. And this was a new school. This was junior high, right? So I was, um, I was starting a new school, like blended from Springmeyer Elementary, go Sparkies! And Delhi, <laughs> Delhi Elementary, I don't know, like, I don't know what their whole deal was. Delhi, I have no idea. But we were, we were combined to be the Beavers, the Bridgetown Beavers. And um, my first day of seventh grade, I was waiting for the bus. And my mom was standing next to me. And um, growing up, <clears throat> I lived kind of in a, a mildly rural area. It was like suburban, and yet there were like vast, at least when I was younger, there were vast like farms, there were orchards around. It was really bucolic and lovely. Like I, I was really, you know, this is a lovely place to grow up. Um, but it was sort of like far afield from other people that I was friends with um, by and large because the district was somewhat spread out. So anyway, it would take like 20 minutes to get to school, which isn't that bad, right? Um, but so I was waiting for the bus and the bus just flew by my stop. I was the only person there. And my mom was like waiting. I think she might have been in the car just waiting to make sure I got on. She flew into a blind rage that I've only seen a few times from my mother. But when it happens, it's, oh my God, so terrifying. So she was in a white hot rage. And what she did, instead of, you know, just getting me from the bus stop to my school, she followed the bus. 
she followed the bus with all of my schoolmates. <laughs> And she did so in this terrifying way of just like methodically like like uh, following the bus and laying on her horn, <laughs> laying on her horn, okay? And uh, the kids in the back were loving it and they were staring me down. They were like, who's that kid? Oh, that's so funny. Her mom is giving the finger. Like seriously, my mom was going insane, okay? Like I'm not exaggerating. She like lost her mind. Um, so yeah, she was laying her horn and following the bus <laughs> every single step of the way until I got to junior high. And uh, so, of course, yes, great way to start out uh, the first day of school. One of my classmates from Springmire, my elementary, came up to me later in that, that day, my friend Amanda, um, <laughs> and she said, your mom is so cool, Jenny. Oh, my God. Like, wow. Did you see her give the finger? I was like, yeah, I was there. Like, I, <laughs> I was totally there for that. Yeah, so that's how I started off. Bruce Challenge, you're going to go Beavers. Yes, it's working. This science experiment, I have combined two separate animals into one. <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> uh, Think of the prizes I will get for a, a duck snake or an otter. Snake. <laughs> you seem confused. Should I combine something else with a snake? Why are you trying to play God? Why are you so okay with your life as it is? Maybe you should play God once in a while. Think of the snake things you could create. So we want to have these hybrid pets at our store. They're quite cute. But why... Can't you combine, like, a puppy kitten or, uh, you know, like a, a parrot and a finch? This Scientific nonsense! What are you <laughs> talking about? I, I, I'm just saying, the otter snake has gotten some negative reviews. Who here is the animal combinologist? Me! Not you, pet store owner person. Look how cute that thing is! The top half is adorable! I'll give you that! <laughs> but you see, the bottom half kind has been strangling the fish. I love the hippo snake you gave me. See? No one else seems to get it. How can they not? It's great. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Jonas. A word for the Atlanta report. I have wanted to get your comment on a string of, of disappearances over the last 12 years. You're doing great, honey. You got this. As I said, I'm with the Atlanta Report. Uh, I've been following you around in my car and laying on the horn trying to get this interview. <laughs> Go Atlanta Report! <laughs> I'm not interested in this interview. I, I can't do oh, it. Okay, well, I, I'm rather I interested in you, a quote. You are going to give my son an answer, and if you don't, I'm going to come right over there, and it's going to be my car following you and not his. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mom. Uh, uh, you to, got this. Uh, you got this. To quote uh, uh, one Jeffrey uh, Steen go uh, on uh, January 6th, I saw the poster grab him uh, and bring him into the poster. I have footage to prove it. I looked at it, and they were laughing at me from inside the film, end quote. It's about your sons. But your sons, the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Give it to me. You want to hear about my sons? Well, guess what? They don't talk to me anymore because I used to ask them all these questions about it. I would hear the things. I would give them a call. They'd say, Mom, get out of my life. Shut up. And looks like one of you needs that message too. Or one of you is going to be stunted forever and never real realize your truth as an adult. You did it! You did it! Oh, you did it! I'm so proud of you! Oh, she's so mad. She's that was so amazing. mad. Hey, Thomas. Yeah. So I was just in the break room, and yeah. um, I was uh, trying to get some coffee. Yeah. And uh, I quit because um, you used it and then didn't refill the coffee pot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm just. Um, I just want to pause you for a second. Um, like, to be fair, I left, like, this much coffee at the bottom, so, like, the pot wasn't empty, so much it's as not it enough coffee to low. It's not enough coffee, Thomas. See, it's not. <laughs> Nothing dripped out. God damn it! <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna, like, pause.
pause you for a second? This is an injustice. <laughs> pause? How? Pause you? Um, you're like reading is very frustrated to me. <laughs> oh, and I'm, um, oh, oh, I'm, I'm frustrated. Yes. You think you can just walk into the break room and take all the coffee like you're the only person in the world. And you know what? I am doing all the faxing right now, and it is like a lot. And how dare you? <laughs> um, I just, I drink coffee. I just thought that anyone could have it. It's just a coffee pot. If you want it, keep it at your desk. Sharon. It is about the community. We share the coffee pot. <laughs> when you are done with the coffee, you refill the coffee. That is just how humanity works. <laughs> <laughs> so the hair salon gave me your number. Uh, yes. So there was like one block this week that I oh. had gotten my hair dyed, and you put your haircut right in the middle of it? Yes. Instead of at the beginning of the day or yes. the end of the day. Yes. And you just... You just inserted yourself. I'm just gonna pause you for a second. <laughs> uh, that's when I could get my haircut. I like a nice like 3 p.m. haircut because I didn't have to wake up early, but also it still looks good for the night that I'm going out. You know what I'm but you've done this every Wednesday for the last three months. Yeah, I get my haircut every Wednesday because Wednesday is like. I'm afraid there's uh, there was only one time to schedule your surgery, Thomas, and you seem to have tried to. Just write your name all over the schedule. I don't even know how you got this. I'm going to pause you for a second. I believe that however long you are going to operate on me for, you can be ten times as careful and take ten times as long. That's how medicine works. You're going to die at this rate, Thomas! No, no, I'm sorry. Your hours are eight to four. You can't just come in at 3 a.m. and assume okay. that that is a good day's work. Hear me out. I am a night owl. <laughs> so, you know, I wake up at two and my brain's like, hoot hoot. I, let's do something. And so I come into work and then I go to bed. And the work gets done. So, what is wrong here? Thomas, I read your proposal. Yes. Uh, this, this Montessori program, it's, uh, it looks revolutionary. I mean, a choose your own adventure. Yes. Uh, so, I was just thinking, right, it's best if kids pick for themselves where they want to go, and we will take care of them where they choose to be. Well, that's that. <laughs> um, okay. I've got an injury story. It's a fun one. Um, when I was a little kid, um, I was staying home from school for some reason. I don't remember why. My brothers had gone off to school. Um, I decided to take a nap in my brother's bed. Uh, so I, I don't know why, but I, I lied down, I rolled over, and there was a spring sticking out, and it just gashed my knee. Um, and it didn't hurt. It was completely fine. It wasn't really bleeding or anything, so it wasn't gruesome. Uh, but I remember sitting on the couch, and I was like, this is enough for me to worry about. I'll wait till my brothers get home. Brothers get home, and they say, oh, you need to go to the hospital. This is a gaping wound. <laughs> it's fine. I'll call my mom. I call mom, and I ask for some bandages. She comes back like an hour later uh, from work, and she has a hefty bag of like three bandages. Uh, and she's like, I got you what you requested. Here you oh my god, you have to go to the hospital. And that's when I realized it was, it was actually a thing. We get to the hospital, uh, and I, I'm in the waiting room for like an hour and a half or so. Uh, we get to the doctor, and I've had this wound open for the last like five and a half-ish hours. Um, and the doctor looks at it, and he says, how long has this been open? I tell him. It says, we don't close anything after six hours, so good job. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I understand you want to give the presentation, but like... I think I earned it. Your elbow is like stick, like the bone is sticking out of your arm. Like I might throw up. I did a sick jump on my skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand me? A triple kickflip. I didn't land it, but I did it. <laughs> Calling 911. I need you to go to the hospital. Barry, you know, we brought you in because the kids are really psyched to see you. You know, how to skate safe was your kind of message. Yeah, I'm psyched about it. I'm psyched about it. Uh, you're, you're, Let me just take off uh, my helmet. You're really, really hurt, man. You're very hurt. You're very hurt and you're very blood. Oh, I'm going to put the helmet back oh, on. That was the only yeah, thing. You're not. I'm sorry. This, this isn't happening. Skating safe is number one priority, right? 
Unless you're gonna do something cool. Okay, but the, the juxtaposition of your open wound and the flesh hanging off your body. I mean, I'm the before picture. Before safe skating. They're gonna be the after. I'm gonna be honest, I was a little skeptical when you said you were running for office. I didn't think you'd make the campaign trail. I didn't even think I was. I, I, you did it, sir! You did it! I've lost a lot of blood. <laughs> the last four months of seeing wound after wound after wound, and you just giving speeches through all of them! <laughs> Dr. Governor, we need you to perform great <laughs> surgery on this patient. He has maybe an hour to live if you don't intervene right now. Sick. Here's a scalpel. Got it. <laughs> Do you need a hand or a... Hey, bro. <laughs> I'd like to welcome to the stand uh, uh, Dr. General uh, Randall Bukima, or as we call him, Jippy Limbs. <laughs> Hey, bro. <laughs> oh, it. Um, how long has this store been open? Oh, it's, uh, well, it's, <laughs> it's hard to say, really. Um, <laughs> it's not hard to I mean, say. It's a week and a half. Come on. Oh, that's it's amazing. Just, well, our reputation preceded us. We had a... Oh, no, we I had a understand. soft opening, and we're just really excited you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super excited. Um, I actually, I came by. This is like a mandatory visit from city council. Um, you've oh. been open a week and a half, so now you cannot close. Oh, you mean? 24 hours. You mean we made it? Yes. Honey! As long as someone is here all the time. Our horse saddle business. <laughs> you thought that... You thought it wasn't going to take off, but we can never close now. Um, Thank you, city council member. Okay, so um, I bought the saddle, so I guess I should be um, headed out of here. So, um, please, but, please stay. You know, I don't... So I heard you need a store lurker. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, you know, I mean... Do you like to stay up all the time? Can you be awake for like 40 hours in a row? I've never had the need for sleep. <laughs> right, that's a good start, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I will sit in the corner of the store where the shadows are the darkest. Okay, I mean, would you would you want to try our storing saddle? Do they know that you're having our meetings here while they're on vacation? Of course they don't. They don't know anything. Well, how do you know the video cameras aren't catching us in the shadows? Because I... And the video cameras. And the Those have shadows. stopped working. I'm the only thing watching. I know it's 3 a.m., but I just bought a horse and I need a way to ride it. <laughs> so are these all for sale? Sure. They're for sale. Um, do, you have any, do you have any recommendations? I'm going out for like some trail riding. So I was thinking faster. <laughs> but you could... Con you could convince me that English is the way to go, um, if you thought it was correct. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I know, I know it's 3 a.m., but I'm a horse. Uh, um, this, is, this is my horse, Gerald. Oh, you're already getting the saddle. I was, I'm so, no, 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 I'm so glad you're here. You should be part of this discussion. I do think that yes, I should. You're going to be the one wearing it. We'll, we'll help ourselves. Don't yeah. worry. Uh, what were you thinking? Cause sort of like, this one's very decorative. You know, I just, I feel more rustic these days. No, Something that is very fair. That is yeah, very fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're like a very, you're like a, you're like a country horse. Like a country horse. Yeah, of like the town and country. I'm like the town and you're like the country. <laughs> it's a good, yeah. it's a good duo. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear something? Hey. anything and I'll answer it for you Patricia cuz <laughs> you know I'm just I never closed off to you yeah yeah so uh um what what's your disease history <laughs> oh well you know that is HIPAA protected but um I guess I'm gonna open, open up this book <laughs> okay where do I begin you know started with the chicken pox when I was seven and 
Actually, hold on Ooh, a second. What a wild ride. I'm just gonna write this down. Um, but can you do like social security number first? Yeah. <laughs> Open book. Open book. <laughs> I just, Patricia, I just love your interest in me. You always make me feel so welcome. Oh God, and, of course. You know, I. You see me. You see me for who I am. I always want to see you and your bank account and your family and your bank account. Uh, what's your father's name? Well, here's my social security card. Oh my god, that's so cute. Just take it. Just take it. It's so cute. You know? Yeah, what's, what was like the street, name of the street you grew up on? Oh, well that was Elm Grove Lane, okay, and that was Maple Grove. And, and Maple uh, Grove, lots of groves. Lots uh -huh. of groves. And I went to Elm Grove uh, uh, Elementary. So, so I love about you, open book. Aww. Amazing. I just I always felt like I was a boring person, you know. Oh my gosh, you are so not. <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. This is like, it's really great to like see you in person. I know. It's so like, right. It's kind of like, like so weird. So and weird, like, right? Uh, yeah. So, where did you grow up? Oh, <laughs> great question. Thank you. Um, you know, I grew up in Tennessee, yeah. in, in Nashville, but where did you grow up? Oh, sorry. I just, like, when I was a kid, I, like, opened myself up personally to uh -huh. someone, and, like, they just, like, took all my secrets, so I just like to keep things really personal. Oh, and, my like, God. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, so yeah. sad. So if you were... To put that in like a one word answer, <laughs> what would it say? Um, I think it, if I were to like describe my most like deepest secret in like mm -hmm. one word, I like think one, it would be one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow, that's amazing. It's like the key that's to like so much. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna be honest, I thought I was supposed to be interviewing you for this job, but I just like, I'm ready. I'm ready to open up now. Tell me your maternal grandmother's first name. <laughs> oh my god. Cece was just, she was everything to me as a kid. Is Cece like shorter for like a longer name? <laughs> you have no evidence. You're gonna have to set me free soon. I'm not telling you anything. So, what was the name of your first pet? <laughs> I haven't thought about Rusty in years. <laughs> I want to say, you're doing a really good job in here. All right, just like keep working it. Do you need water? You talking to me? Yeah. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> That's Karen's job. Let us know if you need a break. Totally. Tell me about Rusty. Was Rusty alive when, like, you had your first job? Like, what city was that in? It was in Newark. Newark. That's really Times were simpler back then. I didn't need to steal or nothing. Steal? Yeah, like when I stole from that bank last week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. <laughs> All right, um, look, I'm nervous to see Mom, too. We've been pulling all the paintings and posters for years, and, you know, it's just... I'll, I'll knock. I'll knock. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, knock yeah. if I have to. Well, yeah, I, I, I can't. You, you should. Hello? 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 It's me, Joe. I know. Joe Jonas. <laughs> I can smell you. It's me, the hall. other one. It's Kevin. Kevin. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Not that anyone would have to remind me of my own name. <laughs> You are the most forgettable, and I'm Nick! He is forgettable. You always said That's it. That's so not true. <laughs> I'm in. Mom. Do you have to call me that? Mama Jonas. Okay, yeah, what? We're sorry for how much we burn. We're sorry for how many we killed. <laughs> it was so, so many. We just want to say that we went to the year 3000, and not much has changed. Still but they on lived the underwater. Water. And your great, great, great granddaughter, she's doing Doom fine. fine. Yeah. Yeah, Where's sorry. Bonus Jonas? Get out of here, Bonus Jonas. <laughs> Little bro. Little bro. Little bro. Little bro. Hey, Little bro. Mom. 
Come here. The new one. Get over here. Let me see your face. You are a Jonas. Uh huh. You are. You have that sneaky, oozy cheerfulness and oh, and a lust for blood. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>